Hello and welcome to SharePoint Edutech's Windows 8 Apps Demo. What I'm going to be doing today is covering how we're able to use Windows 8 Apps to interface and interact with SharePoint. So first, just a bit about me. My name's Brandon Scott and I'm a Windows 8 and SharePoint developer. You'll see my email address and Twitter handle on screen now, so if you have any queries about the content that I cover today, please feel free to email or tweet me them. So I'm going to be demoing our SharePoint Edutech List Hub which is able to read items from SharePoint, add items back to SharePoint, and then also manipulate them all within this Windows 8 app environment. The app offers secure login to Office 365, but it will also work on-premise with SharePoint 2013. We're able to use standard out-of-the-box SharePoint lists to work with this app, for example the announcements list, without any additional server configuration whatsoever. The app is tablet ready so it will work on the Surface or any other Windows 8 tablet and it will all work with your normal touch gestures and orientation features. The app also features a really nice Windows 8 modern UI. So what I'm going to do now is just jump straight into a demo. So this is my Windows 8 start menu as you can see with all the Windows 8 apps and also the SharePoint Edutech list hub right there. So when designing this app it was really important to consider how it would be used in both education and also business. Now in education I can see it being used in two ways. The first one is by parents at home. They're able to download this app and connect to the Office 365 site or SharePoint 2013 on-premise site for their school and they're able to log in just the once and for every subsequent run it would be automatically logging them in. And this means they're able to access information really easily, really quickly, and all in one place. Rather than having to log into SharePoint, then navigate through many different subsites to actually find the, the list that they want to view. I can see this being deployed over a school network, so students and staff alike are able to access their, their information based on their permissions. The, the app is permissions based, so if, if you don't have permission to access a particular list, then you won't be able to. So staff and students are able to access the, the app based on their credentials that, that are logged in and they're able to view all the information really nice and easily. In business I can see this being used by a customer, by an end user for, for the business. So a customer walks into say a reception area and they can approach a touch screen that has this app running. They're able to navigate through all the latest news or uh, financial figures or anything else that the company wants to show on, on the list. Uh, and the customer is able to navigate through that nice and easily. <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is just open the SharePoint Edutech list hub and immediately you can see that we're prompted by a login screen. Now this is the only time in the uh, in the app's uh, lifetime that you should be, that you will see the uh, the first run login screen because for every subsequent run it will automatically log you in. Now you're able to change the credentials and the URL within the site and I'll show you that in a minute. So what I'm going to do is log into our Office 365 demo site. So just log in here. Now what you'll be able to see below this is the agree to terms of service and also a remember me function. Now the remember me function is really cool because it interfaces with the, uh, the Windows 8 credential manager which secures all your credentials nice and safely in one area and that's built into Windows 8 natively. So what I'm going to do is just check these boxes and then I'm going to just click the login button. Now immediately we get some user feedback that something's happening with that progress ring and we're straight into the application. Now what you can see is we're using the latest news uh, list and we're pulling all the list items straight from there. So we can flick through all of these items, we can also use the, the flip view to go, to go through them and this allows us to see all the information within a list. Now just to show you that this is all within one list I can just back out to my desktop here and go into IE. Now as you can see here this is just the uh, just the web part for showing the list here and we can go into the list and see that all the items are being pulled. Now we don't just want to be able to view items we want staff that are based on permissions to be or, or anyone else to be able to add, uh, add items back. So what we can do is right click uh, on, on, a, on a desktop or you can swipe up if you're on a tablet and you're able to access these three functions here add edit and delete so what we're able to do is we're able to add an item back so I'm going to go and add just um, demo showing Windows 8 app now this is going to add an announcement back to the same list and we also have the expiry date field here which is a custom control and we're able to really nicely see all the dates and flick through to find a specific expiry date that we want. 
I'll show you this on a touch environment later because it's really cool. So I'm just going to accept that and click add announcement. So immediately what you saw there was up here we have a toast notification. Now toast notifications are native and built into Windows 8 and they're really cool because they allow users to be shown something or prompted something without actually actually interrupting the user experience. So what I can do is just right click again accessing this app bar and refresh the screen. Now as you can see there we were told that we're, the refresh was completed and we're able to see this list item that was then added. So this, this, this item was added, demo, showing Windows 8 app exactly what I typed in and we can go back now to to IE and refresh here and we're able to see that that list item was successfully added. Now as I said this was permission based so if you don't have permissions to write back to the list then you will be prompted for that and told that you can't write back to the list. I'm going to click on demo here and then I'm going to click edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit uh, updated Windows 8 app and I'm going to edit this announcement and send it back. Again we've got the toast notification, I'm going to refresh here and there we go, updated Windows 8 app. So it was automatically written back to from within a Windows 8 app environment which I think is really cool and sure enough there, there it is uh, in IE. So what I can go and do now is click demo again and then I can go and delete this item. So I can just click the delete button here, it will prompt me are you sure which is obviously really important and then that will be deleted. So if we go back to IE here and go back to the latest news list then you can see it's just disappeared, it's just not there anymore because it's been deleted. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how this interacts with on a touch screen environment. So what I'm going to go and do is just open up Visual Studio with the simulator. So I'm running the app now in Visual Studio 2012 and as you can see I can just click here on the simulator and it will run in a simulation environment. Now I'm simulating a Microsoft Surface here and as you can see I can go into basic touch mode and I can simply emulate a finger tool here so I can just flick through all these different pieces of data really nice and easily with what would be my finger. I can swipe up at the bottom, uh, this app uh, allows you to access the app bar and I can go in and add a new announcement so I can show you this expiry date control which is really nice on a touch environment you can just scroll really smoothly through it and close that off I can also access the Windows 8 touch environment for the keyboard and you get really good feedback for, from this keyboard it's really nice so I can just come out of this and I can show you what happens when you run the, run the app once you've already logged into it so it just takes a second and it loads up and it imports your credentials that you've already typed in before. Now this is already done using the credential manager. Now as you can see here, this is the credential manager. You access this from the control panel, you can go into user accounts and family safety and then you go into the credential manager. And this is stored under web credentials so you can see here the credentials that we've accessed or uh, well we've, we've uh, uh, put in for, for the application when we first run the app. Uh, the password obviously is hidden be, uh, behind administrative permissions but the rest of it's there. Now this is really cool for a network because in Active Directory you're able to redirect this credential manager however you like. For example a student might be able to log into one workstation so they log in there one, one time and then their credential manager has the ability to follow them for every other workstation that they use around the network which is really cool because it gives a really nice seamless fluid experience and it's single sign on so that's great. Now, if you want to change this, for example, for say, say a parent wants to um, change to a, to a different site um, and they, they have one child at one school, they have another child at another school, they're able to simply just change that by swiping out to the left or control R, uh, Windows I key uh, shortcut on, on their keyboard and they're able to go into settings. They can see here the permissions that the app uses, uh, so this is, this is really good, nice and standard. And you can go into the user credentials tool. So this allows you to change the credentials, they can change their username, change their password and also change the URL that they're trying to access with it within, um, within SharePoint. So this was just a quick uh, round, round uh, tour of our list hub and what we've done with it. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any queries please do um, contact me at brandon at sharepointedutech.com and thanks very much for listening. We'll see you next time.